You're listening to Lore Friendly. I'm Chris Takashi, and with me is the life of the party, the bell of the ball. And how do I know this? It says so right in her name. It's Alice. Oh, bell. you sweetie. What's up, Alice? Hi. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> that was cute. I am the bell of the ball. You are. You are the Alice yeah. Bell of the ball. That is a fact. It cannot be denied. It's great. We've got, like, I went to my grandma's this weekend, and because we've got to decorate our student house, she's given me mm-hmm. loads of, like, strings of bells to put around. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's going to be the cutest. I cannot wait. I'm decorating tomorrow. I'm baking tomorrow. But she's giving you strings of bells because your last name is yeah, Bell? Yeah, because, like, our family has an excess of bell decorations, so she uh, had some to adorable. offload. Well, you might as well own it. Um, yeah. My last name means tall bridge in <laughs> Japanese. <so laughs> There's not much you I can can't do, exactly... like, Christmas decoration-wise no, with that, is no. there? <laughs> no, I'm not going to be hanging any tall bridges on a Christmas tree. So, uh, it's kind of convenient, I guess, if your name was Alice yeah. Bell. Bell's a nice, simple one. I mean, you get teased for it for, like, most of your life, but other than that, it's great. That's not very original. Well, my... I had a teacher who used to call me Ding Dong Bell. I was like, okay. Oh, God. And, a teacher? And I had, I had, like, my peers in secondary school calling me Bell End. <laughs> As in, like, the end that... of a dick. Okay, that, <laughs> that is wrong. <laughs> I I got uh, Chris Piss, which isn't very original either. No, that's uh, just shit. Christy. Christy, because my last initial is T, so no, they just quite, started calling me Christy. Cool. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I like that Christy, one. Christy, like a girl's oh, name. Christy. And um, Katie, which are my initials. Ah. There's, there's worse yes. things. There's worse <laughs> things to be called. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I guess kids aren't. Kids are still, like, they're still learning how to tease people. Yeah. They're not getting into that stage where they're really coming up with unique no. names. They kind of tend to outgrow it, too, so. Wow. Well, I guess they do kind of, they don't really outgrow it, because if you look at the internet, most people are, like, 30-year-olds. and they're. No, I think, I I need to believe that, like, the internet is <laughs> under 13, otherwise, like, I lose all it faith in sense. humanity. <laughs> uh... I mean... You'd be... Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Anonymity really helps bring out the child in everyone. Yeah. You know. But of course, it's really about ethics and journalism. Well, l- let's ethics let's not journalism. get into this. <laughs> I've I've stopped keeping up with it. Yeah, me too. Like, I don't want to even talk. Like about loads it. of like my favorite reviews are on like opposite ends of the spectrum and shit. And it's just like, I can't be dealing with this drama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's fun making that joke, yeah, though. It, I love making that you're, joke. You're on, you're on a roll with jokes today. Yeah. <laughs> I try, Alice. For this show. For for our 12 you listeners think about and Johnny it all in Texas. Month. <laughs> yes, I do. Any jokes you have, you note it down. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm unloading them all, just for the sake oh. of this show. Speaking of which, uh, well, it's not really a joke, but I guess... On that note of me being a woman, um, what? <laughs> no, no, I've, I'll explain. So, um, I got this oh! letter. Yes, oh! yes, yes. I got this letter a couple of weeks ago. It's from the National Opinion Network. I don't know what that is, but it's from their infant division, apparently, which sounds kind of military-ish. Yeah. But um, they're basically contacting me to do an important survey of new parents because apparently i have just <laughs> had a child i've sired a child apparently well this mod is your um, baby so yes yes well i i do i did have one son but he starved to death if you don't recall oh um, god yeah in our thoughts anonymous son <laughs> yes yes he's he starved to death well he, he may have not starved to death he may have died from the cold we didn't actually have enough money for an autopsy so oh, well it's we don't know what happened. Died for but various dead. reasons. <laughs> yes. Definitely dead. Um, but I got this letter and okay, so in and of itself it's not really all that weird. I mean it says they value my experience as a parent. So that's kinda of funny if you think about what happened to Yeah. 
my son. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they have all these pictures of babies at the bottom, Aww. which is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So I got this one letter. Okay, so things happen. You get weird shit in the mail yeah. occasionally, right? Was it addressed to you? Yes, addressed to Not me. Not just my... like to a random homeowner. No, no, no. Has my name on it. Uh, oh, so <laughs> last week, that was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, last week, I get, this time I get something from a completely different mailer. Only this isn't a letter. This is a fucking package. It's a box. Right. Like, it, and inside is an entire, like, set of, like, baby formula. (laughs) 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 What? (laughs) Yes, yes. And it says on the package, hello, mom. Inside, you'll find an informative feeding guide and and family samples to use now. If you're formula feeding or supplementing, what the fuck? if you're breastfeeding, why not keep them for another time if your feeding plans change? What the so apparently fuck? the universe thinks I'm not only a new parent, but also I have a pair of functioning tits, which is interesting. It would be a first for humanity, I'd say. Wow. So yeah, I mean... <laughs> have you given anyone uh, your address? Because they might no, have no. set you up for a prank. I don't think anybody knows my address, or anybody would, or, or I mean, I wouldn't see the point of this particular prank, other than maybe saying that I'm a that I'm a, that I'm a woman. I don't know. <laughs> I I don't know. Or maybe what I guess my other theory is that there's another person with my name out there who actually <laughs> is a parent, like and, and is a woman. A woman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and she's like really pissed right now because you've got all her like, baby formula. Her kid needs that. Yeah. She's like nobody's paying attention to my baby, and, and I'm really angry. And meanwhile, I'm getting like truckloads of free shit. Yeah, I won't complain. It's free shit. Yeah, well, it's free shit that I can't use. What am I gonna do with a box of baby formula? Well, if you end up starving, you've always got uh... that. Like zombie apocalypse. It's <laughs> yeah. got all the nutrition you need. It's nutritionally balanced. <laughs> Oh, that's true. You you did say you were good at like zombie games, didn't you? Um good is a subjective term. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about you though is what I'm saying if there was a zombie apocalypse. Um as opposed to a rattlesnake apocalypse which Yeah, fuck the rattlesnake. At that point, you you definitely need to like put up the bat signal. I I don't know how I'd do if it was like a rattlesnake zombie apocalypse. <laughs> Well, if if it was, I'm definitely sending you this box of baby formula because you're going to need it more than me. I'll just hold up in my me. room. <laughs> yeah. Cry. You're going to need it more than me. But yeah, if a zombie apocalypse does happen, I guess I'll have this nutritious baby <laughs> milk <laughs> to drink. <laughs> Only when I'm not breastfeeding. Of though, of course, you know. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm oh, assuming it's yeah. it's for my doppelganger, which reminds me of another thing I want to talk to you about. Oh God, is I was reading uh, an article Ooh. on like that comet thing where they landed a drone on the comet. Oh, I don't yeah, know yeah, what yeah. It was. yeah, yeah. And then the, one of the scientists had like a shirt with naked ladies on it, oh, and it yeah, calls yeah, this yeah. hullabaloo. But that's not why <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> um, I was reading this article about the guy's shirt, and in the middle of the article was a Twitter post, and it was from a woman named Alice Bell. Oh. So you actually have... There's another Alice I, Bell I know. There. She's like a doctor or something. Right, yeah. right. And, and she, you want to be a doctor. Yeah, she's, but she's it, like an actual doctor. Like a a medical doctor, I think. That's even worse. <laughs> she's she's one up on you. Bitch. She's She's encroaching on your brand. Well... We're going to have to end her. <laughs> yeah. D- but does she have voice acting on her resume? No, I didn't think so, bitch! Yeah. I'm just that's right. googling her now. She's gonna have to change her name because I am you're that out big. to get her. Yeah, she's gonna have to change her name to like Alice Estevez or something. Yeah, she's like there's one who's um got got the Twitter handle Alice Bell, bitch. Oh. And she's a writer, editor, and researcher in science and environment, and she also talks about politics, which is boring as fuck. Oh. And yeah, then there's a doctor. Not like Alice. us. We talk about video games. Yeah. And then there's a Dr. Alice Bell, who is in... Oh, bitch! (laughs) She's, like, in fucking 
Englishy type stuff. Uh oh. Although it's like stylistics and narratology. <laughs> oh god. And that's digital literature. Shit. I'm fucking oh, old English bitch. Yeah. <laughs> She's a poser. Old Norse represent. <laughs> <laughs> there can only be one in the end. So My Twitter handle's to... better than all theirs anyway. Yeah. Ducks go way up at Twitter. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna need to let these people know that there's only one Alice Bell. There is there is trouble afoot. Yeah. But there are two Chris Takahashis, apparently. Congratulations on your child, other me. Yeah, we wish your baby all the best. <laughs> if you're listening. If you want to know where your baby formula's gone. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's all that happened to me this month. Anything happened to you? Um, Exciting. I've I've been a strange combination of diseased and injured. Oh. Right, you know, after we recorded the last podcast, it was mm -hmm. a Tuesday, wasn't it? <laughs> and I went out on the Wednesday with the athletics team. Mm -hmm. And somehow, I'm not sure how, I've I managed to fall over and like really badly graze <laughs> both of my knees. Like, they're uh, only just healing. So I was like... A graze? Oh, no. <laughs> no, like, proper skinned. And, of course, I go to bed without cleaning it properly. So I wake up in the morning and it's all, like, stuck to my pyjamas. Ugh. It's really gross. And it took, like, two or three days for it to properly scab over so like, I couldn't wear my running trousers or anything. So I couldn't do <laughs> running for, like, half a week. And because I missed, like, half a week's worth of exercise, I ended up getting ill. Oh, no. So, like, I couldn't breathe properly, so I couldn't do any running. I couldn't breathe out of my nose. And then, like, I thought it was getting better by the Wednesday. So I went to the gym, did a bit of rowing, get my arms all buff and fuck. <laughs> okay. And, like, I was feeling great. I thought, oh, that's that's good. I've only been ill for half a week. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the middle of the night and my ear is on fire like it's it oh, feels no. like i am being stabbed in the ear repeatedly <laughs> and like for the next week or so like i can't hear out of like my left ear at all which is a real fucking pain and cuz yeah. i didn't want to make it any worse i didn't go to like my training sessions for like the next week mm. and it still didn't get better <laughs> and then like out of pure laziness i didn't go for the next week and so like, this is the first time in, like, three or four weeks that I've gone to training. And you'll never guess what. Like, halfway through the training, my ear popped, so now I can hear properly. Oh, yay. <laughs> Just in time for this podcast. Oh, and, and, my wisdom teeth are finally coming through, and it fucking hurts. <laughs> oh. I am... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you need a doctor. Maybe maybe we shouldn't make fun of Alice Bell, the actual doctor. We, uh, we might need her. I know. It's, uh, no one told me that wisdom teeth would be a pain, but they are a pain. <laughs> I understand why babies cry when they are teething yeah, now. Yeah. There's nothing wise about that. It sounds like a bit of a misnomer. No. There's no wisdom to be gained from having wisdom teeth. I'm up. very depressed by my wisdom. They don't need to be pulled out because my gob's big enough to fit them. <laughs> so like, they're, com gob. they're coming through at like a normal angle and everything. So it's fine. Uh, it just it hurts them pushing through the gums. Uh, uh, they should call them hurts pushing through gums teeth instead of wisdom teeth. That'd be a more accurate That name. was bad. I should have given you a month to come up with that. <laughs> like, like you sit on it, stew yeah, it over. Yeah, 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 I know that was awful. But that's that's the perils of doing a yeah. semi-live podcast. Yeah, you can, you can dub it over. It's fine. No one will know. No one. Yes. <laughs> no one except for me and my my shame. And me. Um. And I'll remind you of it constantly. Don't yes, worry. Con yes. <laughs> He's not that witty in real life. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> he practically scripts all of his jokes. <laughs> yes, I do. I planned this like actually years in advance. <laughs> you know, before we even met, I've, I've, if I ever met someone, one and did a day podcast, I will do a podcast <laughs> yes. and I will say this, this, and this. 
Yes. That's my That's impression why... of you, by <laughs> yeah. the way. You're, you're an old, posh English woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been. Well, actually, the jokes have are actually been in my family for generations. They're, they're, they're actually on tablets, and they're passed down. You know, because my, my, yeah, my parents never had an opportunity to use the jokes. So what happens is they pass it down to the next generation. In the hope that they'll be able to use them. That's beautiful. Yeah, but they'll all die with me because, or my, my corpse. This is like your family legacy right here, right now. Yes, podcast (laughs) jokes. (laughs) Everything is about that. (laughs) Oh, this God. is my life on the line. Stop laughing, Alice. I, 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 I'm, I respect your family's traditions. It's yes. amazing. <laughs> yes, well, in, in America, we don't really America. have... In America. We don't really have, like, the ancient stuff like you do, you know, in your English land, whatever it's called. England. English. <laughs> English town. <laughs> Here in America, we only we have new and modern traditions like podcasting. So, well, podcasting is becoming pretty popular over here. I have to say. <laughs> oh, is it? I think so. Maybe. What are s- <laughs> radio <laughs> still a, a thing from here? That? Yeah, radio and. Yeah, we have a uni radio station. Oh, That's, so do we. Pretty big. Ours is manned by like some old hippie guy. He has a really cool voice, I guess. That's what you need. You need a radio voice. I know. That's the old joke, right? The radio people are like, like totally ugly and, and but they have ex- amazing voices. So that's why they don't get into acting. They get into radio. See, we should just do like a video blog because we're just too beautiful to oh, be hiding speak, behind these. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can do you. You can do video. And then I'll just have like a Muppet or something. <laughs> a sock puppet. <laughs> yeah, a sock puppet. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. What was our first topic? Um, competitive games, games that we are good at. Oh, that's and... right. Because everybody's good at something. Like um... I, for instance, am good at procrastination and picking things up with my feet. Wow! I yeah. did not know that about you, Chris. Yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, picking things up with your feet is a good skill for any would-be procrastinator, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, it's more time-consuming than just picking something up with your hands. So, therefore, it's more effective in terms of a procrastinating activity. Exactly. It's efficient. Unefficient. Unefficient. Because you're <laughs> procrastinating. Oh, that's true. Exactly. Lazy, but inefficient. No, it's not lazy, because it takes a lot more effort to get your, from an object from your feet to your hands than it but would... But you don't have to bend over. Bending over is a pain. I don't know, because, like, have you ever tried... Because, like, what you have to do is, I'm going to demonstrate this now, and you're going to have an audio commentary. <laughs> okay. All right, I'm going to pick up my pencil case with my feet. Okay. So you have to, like, flip it over until you can, like, get it in between your feet. And then you have to, like, bring it up until you're, like, in a front (laughs) position. No, No, but that's different. You're... I I, I shouldn't say feet, then. I should say toes. Like, picking things up with your toes. Oh! um, Use, like, that pincer action. Like, you're clamping shit. My toes aren't long enough. I've got really jitty feet, so... (laughs) Are you, like, uh... They're, like, stubby say they're stubby i like they're <laughs> long but i've got really short toes it's a bit oh, weird okay. so you you actually have to bend over and pick shit up well i can do it with like the bulk of my feet i just can't like with my toes ah uh, i see <laughs> so you're you're more like a like a melee kind of foot fighter <laughs> yes you're, yeah i just you're... hit things as hard as possible <laughs> yeah. there's no skill involved they're like two clubs down there <laughs> see i was thinking more of like you know being a little bit dexterous and kind of like picking things up but yeah. like a monkey <laughs> exactly i i need to i need to incorporate that more into my like i need to put that on my resume <laughs> chris takahashi skills like a monkey <laughs> does things like a monkey 
Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get hired right. at every company with that one. Right. That this, <laughs> they're like this other guy, you know, has exactly the skills we need. But man, this Chris fellow, <laughs> he's a monkey. He's just <laughs> yeah. He, he can do things like a monkey. He could throw feces and pick up shit with his feet. Nice. That's exactly what we need at this company. That is the mental image I needed to make my day. <laughs> Yes. Hey, don't blame me for the jokes. They've been written on tablets for hundreds I, of thousands of years. I'm not blaming years. you. Don't worry. I appreciate them greatly. Don't don't you worry. Yeah. They were written down like at the dawn of time, all right? Passed down through generations. Generations, wars. generations. Yeah. So, anyways, competitive gaming. <laughs> After that um, little segue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, everybody's good at something. So, what are you good at, Alice? I am going to get slaughtered for this, but I am so fucking good at Just Dance. Like, I am, what is it? I am a fucking excellent dancer. Okay, so so you're good at real dancing, too. No, not just... no, I'm shit at no? real dancing. I'm great at dancing with a Wii remote. Like, oh, okay. we, have, um, we have a Wii in our house, in, like, our student house. Mm-hmm. And, we'll, and we used to have, like, Just Dance nights and things. And I okay. know all the dancers off by heart, and I get so into it that I'm pretty <laughs> sure that the housemates are going, are like refusing to play with me anymore, because I'm just <laughs> like we had like almost like a tournament or something, so like winner stays on. I was mm. I stayed on for like ten dancers, <laughs> and we were cycling through a house of like seven girls because they don't want to play with you because you're that good. Yeah, it's. I'm that oh. good that no one else gets a turn. <laughs> You're that kid. Yeah. Great. I get so into it. It's so good. I love it. There's one called... Yeah. They, they've got dances for, like, This is Halloween, and, like, Beyonce, and... Oh, they've got, um... Oh. They've got Hit Me Baby One More Time and stuff. Oh. oh it's great. And the best thing is, our TV mm. is in front of a window... And our window has no blinds, and it's opposite, like, we have, like, a house of lads next door. Mm. And, like, our window for our living room, like, goes straight into their window for their kitchen. And, like, neither of us have blinds. So they'll just come down to the kitchen to make a cup of tea. And they'll see, like, three or four girls flailing about, dancing. (laughs) It's great. We are the best, we are the best neighbours in the world. I imagine it. They they would share that opinion. Uh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I was gonna say something bad, but that's okay. okay. I, I'll be on my best behavior. Good for this podcast. <laughs> so, um, is there are there songs that you normally wouldn't like, but you like like Britney Spears mm-hmm. and stuff because it's associated with your your favorite game? Um. Oh, let me think. Because that's how I feel about karaoke. Like you, you can't sing songs like seriously. You have to sing like the stupid, goofy pop songs. We have got like an X Factor song game as well that I'm really good at. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I can sing, kind of, not very <laughs> Maybe. well. But I, I, I've done songs for the mod. Yes, you have. You have, and you've done they're, a very good job. They're not very good, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I have, no, I have gone to good. myself in game and listened and been like, oh, shit. <laughs> it's your your acting is wonderful. That's all. <laughs> That's all that counts. Yes, that is all that counts. But yeah, it's um, it's your singing is fine. It's good. It's possible. Um, it now, is possible. I'm trying to think. What oh, what song is it that I really like in the game? But I hate in real life. Uh, it's um, it's super bass. What's super bass? I'm you know that, that Nicki Minaj song. Oh, uh, we got no, that boom with a pop, boom with a pop uh. it. I got that super bass, boom with a pop, boom with a pop it. I got this. I'm so oh, good at the dance. That is catchy. I think you, I could dance to that. It's Not very great. Well. You, you have you, you. There's some great moves in there. <laughs> like oh, um, and I'm sure you know all of them. I do. <laughs> I know all the dancers off by heart. No shame. Uh, uh, well, that's the bet. I mean, you have to, you have to kind of not take yourself seriously when you do those no. kinds of things, because otherwise it's not fun. It, the person who takes themselves too seriously is is kind of like the one everybody kind of groans mm. and like looks sideways at. 
But it's great for everyone else because they get to look at me prancing about like a bloody idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do everything. Everything. Right, You're anyway. A pro. Yeah. So, yeah. Remind me never to challenge you on a, on a dance off oh. <laughs> that I would have anyway, but you're a pro. I, I will throw This Is Halloween out and blow your socks off. <laughs> okay. Right, so um, games that yeah. you're competitive at. <laughs> uh, I was going to make another bad joke, but I won't. Because your mother is listening. No, my, my, <laughs> I'm the only one who's allowed to make the dirty jokes, okay? Yeah, yeah. So that's when you hear those long pauses. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, should I say this? Do I stick my finger in, in, the, in the guillotine? Or I say finger as opposed to, uh, do I stick my dick in the guillotine? It's basically. Lovely. Lovely yeah. image there. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, <laughs> the game I was good at, or the game I'm really good at, and is, is Mario Kart 64. Wow! Uh, for the Nintendo sixty four. That is my that is my go to. That was the game I was really really good at. Um, I knew how to do all the turbos on the on the when you're turning the corner. I knew all the shortcuts like you can jump over the wall or like you can leap off Rainbow Road and land uh, like way ahead. I used to love that game. Yeah, I'm that, really bad at it, but I loved it. <laughs> yeah. But that's the great thing about it is that unlike just dance. If you're really bad at it, you get the better items. Yeah. So so anybody can play. So it, level, really... it levels the playing field. Right, right. It's like socialism. <laughs> um, it, it the good thing about it is is that like anybody can play, and like even uh, anybody, everybody of all skill levels can play, and and that's why like I think it, it was always fun regardless of how good I got because the. The worst players would get better items, and even the shitty items, like if a red shell is coming at you, you can like drop a banana mm. or keep a banana out of your asshole and and block it. <laughs> and and so that that was that was the game I was really good at. But yeah, like I read somewhere on Tumblr, like yeah, they should totally make a uh, Mario Kart. They should use it as like like Obama should use it as like his economic policy because it's so awesome. Yeah, and, like everybody wins. Like yeah, I can agree with that. Yeah. I know I sound like a communist pinko, but I'm pretty much I pretty much no, am. No, no, so. <laughs> I, I get. I'd support communism if it wasn't so <laughs> fucking awfully applied. Yeah, it's easily corrupted. Yeah, basically. humans are the shitty. Actual... If humans yeah. weren't shitty, it'd work. But right. Humans are fundamentally assholes. Yeah, yeah. The ideals behind it aren't. Yeah, like I love Marxism. I think he's a great guy. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're now we're on like every uh, what uh, NSA list? Or yeah, well, CIA list. Yeah. Oh well. We've just we've just well. Luckily, I mean, that's not the the main focus right now. I mean, Hopefully. McCarthyism yeah. and all that happened a long time ago. But we may brush that topic later, yeah. g- uh, given yeah. the research that I've done. Oh, okay. Uh, good. I'm looking forward to that. So, um. Well, what do you think about competitive gaming in general, like esports and things like that? Do you think it has a future? I, I think it's absolutely bizarre. <laughs> do you? Really? I, I um I watched the documentary Free to Play a couple of months back. You know mm. that I think it's I think it's about Dota, isn't it? It's about Probably. it's about a Dota tournament. It was the first one where there was like a million dollar prize mm-hmm. or something, and. It was amazing seeing like how dedicated these people were, and like how in places well, yeah, like professionals. yeah, it's their livelihood, and like how in places like South Korea and stuff, these guys are held up as being actual athletes, whereas like o- obviously over here it's completely different. <laughs> we just see them as a bunch of nerds, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But it's amazing like how much practice they put into and how much effort they put into it and it is like an actual job and the way they treat it is like it's an actual sport and i can see it taking off definitely i can see it like being treated (laughs) as a real sport maybe not as popular as like baseball or football or whatever but still pretty appreciated by people who are into that kind of thing yeah i i think as far as a sport goes it's it's like on the same level as billiards or um, something that doesn't require athleticism so much as it requires skill. Like chess. Yeah, chess, in a way. I mean, 
as as far as popularity goes, I can see it be as popular as like golf or, or tennis or probably more so because more people play video games than hmm. play golf like you don't need a country club membership to play no. video games so so there's a bit of a connection there where people understand the level of skill required to play those games at a high level hmm. um what they will never have is that sense of community like i could talk to somebody from the city i was born um, from the bay area basically and we could talk about our shared memories, basically, without even ha- having to meet or know anything about this person. We have shared memories, shared experiences, because we there's a sense of community around a particular sports team. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's like that for... Football teams. Football, yes. Actual <laughs> it's football. It's called soccer here. Not yeah. shitty uh, soccer. Like Liverpool and... And Manchester. Everton and Manchester, yeah, Arsenal. Yeah. I don't even pay attention to football, yeah, and I know yeah. all these fucking teams. Yeah. I'm, I'm like throwing out names too because I don't know anything about Just it. Just throw um, out the name of a city, and yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Apart from London, I don't think London has any football teams. I think they're like named different things, like after different areas, like Arsenal, Chelsea, Queens, things like that. Oh, we have a Queens, Queens, New York. Ah. I think we have Queen's Park Rangers or something. I'm not quite sure. Except we don't have an actual queen. No. No. That's a bit... We we don't need one. We have democracy. You dumbos. (laughs) We have freedom. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) We have bald eagles to worship. Wow. Uh, Yeah. So, yeah, that's... I mean, and another thing that would help the sport is probably... And and this goes for any sport is just having characters and interesting people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that makes you want to. Because that's kind of like what makes wrestling go. I mean, it's all scripted, but they have these like, drama are, yeah. and characters and yeah. Like they so people, script rivalries and shit like that. R- right. It it's more fun if if there's a little bit of drama attached, a little bit of like shit talking attached. Yeah, because it's like, oh, what like they're gonna do next? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Esports, yay or nay? I'd say yay. Yay. Okay, we're in agreement. But I'm usually for everything. Yeah. We always need more diversity and entertainment. Yeah. We can't just be sitting around picking shit up with our toes all day. (laughs) (laughs) We need something to do. (laughs) Something to watch. So our second topic is our video game of the month. Uh, We could have gone with Dragon Age or... Assassin's Creed or something, <laughs> Far Cry or something, all the cool kids are doing, but we are totally uncool. I chose this one. Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're indie. We're like the we're like the trendy kid. I'd hardly like, call the game indie, but <laughs> but um yeah, I chose this game because I'm doing a research project at my clown school <laughs> yes, concerning yes. depictions of Loki in modern media. So oh, oh, we just sounds fancy. Well, yeah, so I decided that we should play Smite because it was on Yay. my to playlist anyway. Smite is okay. a is a MOBA where you play as various gods and mythical figures fighting other gods. It's in like the same vein as LOL and Dota and shit like that. And Yes. Can I just say that this is probably the game that I have like that whilst doing this podcast, it's probably the game that I've had, like the most fun playing because it hasn't really? made me cry, it hasn't <laughs> made me think too hard, and it hasn't made me scared or disturbed or anything. And it's just so much fun. It's just good, unadulterated, <laughs> addictive fun. And it didn't result in any dead children. No, best part no of dead or- children. Or Dead Alice's. Or Dead Alice's. It's great. Yeah, I I haven't really played any MOBA, so I don't have any experience. Uh, But yeah, I could totally see... It's in that Mario Kart vein where it's something... Or Mario Party vein where it's something that you play with a bunch of friends and you have a kick-ass time and there's no hard feelings afterwards and it's easy to pick up. The thing I like best about it is... Like the diversity of gods. Oh yeah, I yeah, was yeah. I I was just thinking, oh, it'll only have like Greek, Roman, dub dub dub, yeah. but no, it had like Chinese gods and stuff like that. It has that. the god of bees. Yeah, the god of bees. 
Excellent. I yeah, did. But... I didn't play as him. <laughs> oh no! Were you forced to play as the Norse gods, basically? Uh, no. Well, I played Neith for a bit because she's pretty cool, but her her um her characterization is so weird. Like she is the Egyptian goddess of war and hunting, and she is ridiculously cutesy. Like. I was playing oh, yeah. a game, and she said at one point, "Wait for me!" <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and "She's what wearing the fuck? this skimpy outfit too." Right? Yeah, it's yeah. it's like bizarre how all the female goddesses are dressed. Yes, absolutely They're... bizarre. Like Freya is in boob armor. Neith is wearing a cloth, and um, oh, what's her name? The um, the Indian. Goddess of Destruction. I can't remember her name. But she was wearing nothing. And what about it... the men? Are the... Is it equal opportunity? No. Nakedness? no. Oh, Thor has clothes. amazing armor, though. <laughs> oh, that's like, easy. seriously cool. It's, like, so bulky and heavy, and you can feel the weight of it. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I like how they have gods of, like, heaven and earth, and then, like, gods of, like, my neighbor Jim's lawn. <laughs> I think the game needed that kind of diversity, though. Yeah. Uh, Like Cupid. They have Cupid, it looks like here. Yeah, oh, he's so cute. But, um, yeah, uh, they have, they have, um, Hel is one of the gods. Like, she's, she's not a member of the Norse pantheon, but she's a figure in Norse myth. She's one of Loki's three children that will bring about the end of the world. Wait, did you say Hera as in Zeus's wife? Hel. Hell. Oh, hell. But with one L instead of two. Oh, okay. Makes all the difference. And in, like, the Norse text that I've been studying, she's described as being, like, half light and half dark. And I think the game really plays with this really well. Because you can switch her abilities. Mm -hmm. So, like, in her darker abilities are far more, like, offensive-based, whereas her lighter abilities are a, put her into a more of a healing role, which I thought was a really interesting play on the concept. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, I I think most of the the gods are... Well, unless, if they're, they're either wearing skimpy armor in order to, like, appeal to yeah. men, or they're, they're kind of warped... For the the purpose of the game, which is okay, yeah. Obviously, you you, you want to make the game playable as opposed to being historically accurate, yeah. Obviously, um, but I I do like the the fact that there is some kind of historical context put into the game. Yeah, like, like it tells you like the basis of each god and like their powers and like where their where their inspiration is from, basically. So so it's almost like learning. I mean, yeah. I wouldn't expect it to be taught in a co- in any no uh, legitimate college. <laughs> but for it's your college, not. It's, it's okay. not being taught. I chose it for myself because it's got <laughs> okay. a really interesting depiction of Loki. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. That that's different. So you're the one who's at fault. Yeah, I'm the one who's at fault. <laughs> well, I I like that in games. Um, I think a good example would be Civ. Like in yeah. between, whenever somebody's attacking me, I like to read their Wikipedia page and, <laughs> and, and get a scouting report. Damn like, you, what, Gandhi! <laughs> like, what makes this guy think? And uh, obviously, the Wikipedia page isn't really a good indicator no. of how they're going to act when they settle cities near you. But yeah, uh, it is kind of fun to kind of just get this kind of like background information. Like my spies are, like you know, finding out this about this guy. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's kind of fun. I mean, you probably can't do it in, in while you're in a battle arena, but it's still it's still kind of fun to yeah. learn about them. As opposed to a game like, I don't know if you played Beyond Earth, the new Civ game. No, I haven't. No. But the thing that that I find lacking is just because they're futuristic people and you don't know anything about them, oh. and they're bland. They just they all wear the same like kind of like gray suit. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but. They, uh, they I can't just don't... correct you if you're wrong because I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, um, but they they don't have any character to them, or they they don't really have anything that that makes them stand out. So I don't know that something's lacking for me when it. Oh, when yeah, I play it seems like a bit of a strange concept because Civ's always been based in 
what if all these past legendary leaders got together and like we're all ruling at the same time like what would happen and i don't think that it has the same kind of impact if it's like placed into a future with people who like we've never heard of because they don't exist right they i do think it could work if they spent a little more time on character development like you know they they basically introduced these characters gave you background on them yeah uh, let you know what what you know what they're all about and well they're not even like his they're not even rulers they're like corporations Mm. so they're even more faceless so i don't know maybe they should have just gone with like known corporations like uh well they probably couldn't get away with it but like pepsi (laughs) they could have done parodies (laughs) yeah yeah that's true yeah, that would be awesome. See, it's like Pepso. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be way and more Cola fun. And Cola Coca. Yeah, exactly. That would be way more fun. We're just like giving them ideas and shit, helping get, them make get money. Shit, get Sid Meier on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to copyright this shit <laughs> where someone steals it. But yeah, that would totally yeah. make it more immersive, I think. But anyways, so you're in favor of... Smite, you like yes. this game? Yes, are we doing the ratings? Uh, yes, on the scale of Game of Thrones characters, what are you giving it? I'm going to uh, skew the rating system a bit, and I'm going to give it the rating of the TV adaptation of Game of Thrones. Okay. So, like, as a pure, like, show watcher, the show still requires, like, one or two, three watch, two, two or three re-watchers to, like, fully grasp the plot and the characters and everything. And the characters in the TV show are presented on quite a surface level. And, right. like, you as a reader can, like, dig deeper to find out more about them and understand them better, which is what you can do with the gods in this in this uh. game. And there's also a ridiculous disproportion in male-to-female nudity. <laughs> yes, that's true. Ah, oh, that's so. really good. That I'm almost ashamed, ashamed to say mine because it, it lacks the same impact, but... What? I'm going to go with Lady Stoneheart. Ooh. Because she she's not spoilers. Exa- spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> she's she's not exactly Caitlyn Stark, obviously. She looks like her. Well, that may not apply because none of these gods look like them, but um she she's kind of like a a, a bastardization of the original yeah. Caitlyn or Catelyn. Yeah. And um she also is is somewhat of a leader type warrior type, which isn't something you could say about some of these gods like Cupid or uh, the god of I don't know bees. Bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, God. We need bees. They're like disappearing. We need the god of bees to show up and stop like. Come on, man! You need to help us out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, or like the goddess of let's see, cats. Yeah, these are these are not. Freya is the- pretty. Freya is pretty much like the goddess of cats. Like, her chariot is drawn by two cats. Oh, okay. Just I was it. referring to Bastet, I the know, Egyptian cat. I know, oh. but, but, but Freya <laughs> you is You want also... to talk about Freya. <laughs> it's yeah. my area of expertise. This show yeah. has a lot of my areas of expertise <laughs> in it this yes. week. I wonder why. <laughs> Probably because you pick pick the show. I pick the game. You pick yes. the topics. Yes. I, I do like it when you pick the show the t- topics or the games because it saves time for me to write more jokes yeah <laughs> and plan them out <laughs> to dig them out of the family archives yeah exactly like it, it takes a lot of archaeological research to find those yeah jokes yeah, they're buried deep um so i'm gonna give it a, a catlin stark see Slash now i'm already lady turning stoneheart. British. lady stoneheart sorry um I'm turning more British because I'm saying things the way... I'm going to start saying patronize, too, instead of patronize. <laughs> um, In uh, fairness, but... I don't pronounce half of my words right. So. <laughs> okay, so I'm learning the language of Alice. Yeah. Instead of... Yeah, okay. Good to know. <laughs> um, so, But I'm going to actually agree with you and say it is kind of like the TDP adaptation of Game of Thrones. A lot more violence, too, I'd say. Yeah. Well, I don't know. There's a there's a lot of violence in the North Yeah, Smiths. but in the books in the books, spoiler alert, they didn't actually like stab the baby, the pregnant no. baby stomach. 
I mean, that that was a little <laughs> much. No, but in this game, they also didn't have Loki being tied down by the intestines of his son, which was ripped apart by his other son, who was transformed into a wolf, and it doesn't have him having venom dripped on him by a serpent. So, I don't know. I think... Well, it, it, it I... presumes that happened, and now he's fighting in this arena. Uh, I suppose, but it doesn't really go into it in the gruesome detail that you would expect. <laughs> no, that's true. Okay, okay, I'll give you that. But Cupid isn't fighting. In... Well, I don't really know much about Cupid, but I assume Cupid, is, the god of love, is not fighting in an arena. Or anything like no, that. I, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't dig that deeply into the game. So, <laughs> so in a scale of Game of Thrones characters, we are giving Smite Game of Thrones the TV show. Yeah. Okay. So if you like the TV show, you'll like Smite. That's what we're saying? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's how you're gonna feel about it. You're gonna. Well, feel, yeah, yeah. It, that's that's why our rating system is awesome. Stop bagging on our rating system. I'm Alice. not. I I appreciate our rating system. I think yes, it's unique it, and it wonderful. It captures the the essence. Je ne sais quoi. Yeah, the essence of what the game is, as yeah. opposed to a number. Would you rather we rate the game on a number system, Alice? No, is that what you're saying? no, no, of no. Not. Fuck numbers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, worthless. <laughs> Moving on to our last topic, question time. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you excited? <laughs> I am so excited. Question one. Marie from Paris asks. Recently, there has been a lot of rancor regarding microtransactions in Assassin's Creed Unity, and I couldn't help but notice a parallel in the game's setting. Is it true that King Louis bankrupted France to help the Americans? Is this an example of the dangers of paying to win? Alice? Well, I would just like to say that I did history A-level, and for two years I studied Louis the Fourteenth through to Louis the Sixteenth and oh. the French Revolution. So you actually know something about this topic. I, I didn't even have to go on Wikipedia. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. So, we have a lot of notes. This I've practically written an <laughs> essay that kind of devolves into lots of swearing and okay. craziness. Because okay, I couldn't do, do that in my um, actual A-level work. Uh-huh. Right, so... Let us go back to Louis the Fourteenth to try and understand this conflict between France and England, which is central to the reasons why France joined the American Revolution. And why we have our freedom. Right. And you have your queen. Yeah. Right, so Louis the Fourteenth had seen the Frondes Rebellion growing up, which was which was a noble revolt. And once he came to power, he sought to consolidate his power base by creating, like, a cult of worship around him, which is why he's known as the Sun King. He aimed to bring glory to France, and this, of course, being, uh, being, like, just past the Middle Ages, this meant a lot of war. So, So, wait, wait, so when you say cult of worship, was he, like, a god? He tried to present himself as a god. He um he evoked a lot of like tr- uh, Renaissance imagery, so he equated himself with a lot of Greek oh. and Roman gods. So can we add him to the smite list? Uh, n- n- uh, he no. was Christian, <laughs> okay, but he liked to evoke all this like rich imagery. So okay. the most one of the most important wars for the French English rivalry is actually the Dutch War of sixteen seventy two, in which mm. French aim France aimed to extract humiliating terms of surrender from the Dutch. And the Dutch were basically fuck this shit and they flooded Amsterdam because mm. bitch you're not getting our Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, William of Orange. <laughs> Not our was... whores and weed. No. Um, <laughs> William of Orange was. Um, he basically refused to back down. He was like the leader. He was like the Orange family was like one of the strongest families in Holland, and he refused to back down. And due to his later marriage to the English princess Mary, and the anti-Catholic s- sentiment against her father, King James. He eventually became England's first and only joint monarch in 1688, and he has a lot, a big grudge against France, and now he has a big country to help him out with it. 
So okay. Louis basically has this dude who a hates him on the English throne, and meanwhile, back at home, Louis is building one of Europe's first standing armies, which costs a lot of money. He was invest- yeah. investing in failing commercial ventures, including a number of trading settlements and colonies, including Louisiana, which is where it gets its name from. <laughs> oh, God. And that's a ho- now that I'm yeah. never going to be able to look at that name the same way. Yeah. It's like me calling a, a state Christiana. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> right. Anyway, so when Louis died in 1715, after two more hugely debil- debilitating wars with no clear winner, and building a stupidly huge palace, the Palace of Versailles, <laughs> and refusing to invest in agriculture despite a series of bad winters, Louis XIV's crown was in 26 million livres of debt, compared Whoa. to the 2 million of debt that it started at, at the start of his reign. Mm. So... Louis the Fifteenth comes along, who, by all accounts, is a terrible fucking king. He spends most of his time making babies with mistresses, and he even built an on-site brothel at Versailles. He lets his mistress, Madame de Pompadour, pretty much run one of his wars for him. And under him, buttloads of taxes were both continued from his grandfather's reign and added to, doing little to ingratiate himself to the peasantry by taking what little money he could from those who needed it most. There was a tiny period where the crown was debt free in 1738, but this didn't last very long because everybody likes war and war is great for getting back into debt. Mm. So in 1755, the Seven Year War comes along, and the most important thing to take away from it is debt, obviously, and a number of crushing naval defeats by the British, loss of territory in North America and some of the other colonies. Thus, bringing this rivalry between the British and the French to a head again. And another important takeaway is that because of this war, the British increased taxation for the Americans, which obviously infuriates the Americans yes, because they're paying... Yes, threw your yeah, tea into the ocean. Yeah, bitch. <laughs> um, so now we're going to skip ahead to Louis the Sixteenth who is the one who gets his head lopped off. And by all accounts, he was a pretty cool guy and a real family man, and that isn't ideal for a monarch of a country which is slowly going down the shitter because of debt, taxes, and really poor fucking harvest, because basically there is a run of bad harvest throughout these three kings' reigns. And people are starving. So in 1776... Louis the Sixteenth announces his support for the American Revolution, mainly to get back at Britain because they just can't stop because they basically hate each other, yeah, but also yeah. because Fuck he supports guys. Enlightenment ideals. But I'm not going to get into that because I haven't written much of that on my already page worth of notes. Hmm. Anyway, he they basically send over food, weaponry, money, medical supplies, and troops, and they're basically throwing all the tax money that they're getting from the peasants at America to ensure that they're liberated. Yay. But it's really because they hate Britain. <laughs> <laughs> well, we benefited, and and yeah. that's where you get, you know, and then the French are starving, and then that's where you yeah. get the, wait, the wait, whole wait, let, wait. Them, uh, let them eat cake you, thing. That isn't even a real quote. So yeah. America <laughs> wins out, obviously. Yay, liberation. Uh, and the French troops who come home, they've come home with these funny ideas about liberty and freedom from the crown. And this coincides with more super shitty harvests and really heavy taxes on the war, even though Louis the Sixteenth tries to ag- uh, enact some agricultural reforms a hundred or so years too late. <laughs> So basically, nice try, buddy. <laughs> France has jumped in on a war that had absolutely fuck all to do with them. Wars are expensive and the crown's main income is tax and the only estate that, they, that can be taxed is a third estate, which is the peasantry. And the majority of them are really fucking poor. The shitty, fu- the shitty winters have made food scarce and expensive. So the already malnourished peasantry are dying of starvation. This coincides with the Enlightenment ideals and the proof that the revolution against the crown can work via America's example. So after a couple of political crises involving riots and tennis court meetings, boom! Vive la revolution... Revolution... Boom! (laughs) Vive la revolution, motherfuckers! Yeah. 
the, and the we're moral, gonna catch that in yeah. editing <laughs> okay don't and worry the moral, it'll sound <laughs> better do <laughs> And the moral of this story is don't pay to win wars that have little to do with you when you're already in debt and hungry. Like mac- yeah. microtransactions, just pay yeah. food instead. Yeah, don't, don't do that unless you want to change the world for the better by making America the most powerful nation in the world. Seriously, fuck France. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. You do, you do oh. realize without America that... Well, I don't know if it would have played out that way, butterfly effect and all that, but America did help save Europe in World War Two. Can't forget that. Uh, well. We we like to remind everyone of that whenever we do something wrong. Well, remember World War Two? Yeah. Remember the Nazis? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those not you'd be a Nazi slave right now. Weren't for America. Fuck yeah. French well. fries. <laughs> well. Liberty. Uh, I don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> Yeah, how yeah. the world will have turned out if America wasn't liberated, will yeah. we? Yeah, no, we might not have this podcast. So yeah. it was a good thing. Or it might be like the most. Oh. it might be a radio show. Oh, that would it be might cool. be different. We'd have the podcast, but I would be different. I'd certainly be different. I'd have a, an English accent. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah <laughs> I, would, I would be from some some horrible place like uh mr bobbly bibbly <laughs> city or whatever <laughs> mr oh, blobby god. city is what i where i'd be coming from oh god please tell me that you've been watching some more mr blobby <laughs> no no, no. Oh. I, I want to sleep at night i don't want nightmares. i love mr blobby Blooby, oh, blooby, blooby. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> I want to be able to sleep at night. So, um, is <laughs> is <laughs> to answer the question? I guess Louis did pay to win, even yeah. though he ended up losing. In and it end. was really fucking stupid. Well, sometimes when you win, you lose. Yeah, your head. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and the head of your wife. Yes, and yes. your children get exiled to Austria. Next question. Oh, can I read this one out with my Yorkshire accent? Oh, yes, go for it. Go for it. Yay, please. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Beatrice to the stage. Hello, Beatrice. Do you have a question? Michael from Yorkshire (laughs) says, Dear Alice and other guy. (laughs) That's me, other guy. I am proper looking forward to the new (laughs) Dragon Age game. I don't know much about story, but the name would lead me to believe that the game borrows elements from the Spanish Inquisition. In particular, the conflict between the Chantry and the Majors. My question is, did the Inquisitors of Yore put people on trial for magic, witchery and other mystical jive? Or am I wrong to expect the Spanish Inquisition? No one expects the Sananish Inquisition. The the Sananish Inquisition. Yeah, I fucked that up. Oh, (laughs) that's what happens when you don't practice. Oh, dear. Oh, God. I'm going to fix that in editing. Okay. Everything will be fixed in editing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let, let's let's fix that right now. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. So hey! it, it's all see. Yeah, it's all seamless. Uh, oh, dear. Right. Okay. Right. Anyways, answer the so, question. <laughs> the Spanish Inquisition was originally established in 1478 by the Spanish monarchy in an attempt to maintain Catholic su- supremacy across the kingdom especially due to the relatively high population of Muslims and Jews within the country. The basic message was convert or fuck the hell off. And this was quickly extended to include Protestants who, whilst Christian, didn't recognise the authority of the Pope and this therefore posed a risk to the monarchs whose rule was largely backed by Rome. Um, One of the few cases where Protestants and Luther. Lutherians, so named after Martin Luther, founder of the Protestant movement, were taken to trial was the sect of mystics. And I'm really going to fuck this up because I'm bad at Spanish. Alumbrados, I think the sect was called. Anyway, the, (laughs) the mysticism in this case refers to their belief that the human soul can become perfect during life and once it reaches this state, no sin can harm its standing with God. And this, therefore, rejected the pageantry of Catholicism, paying for prayer, and none of these mystics were executed. They were just imprisoned. Okay, so... But they weren't... I mean, 
If they were witches, why would they you weren't, let them live? They weren't witches, they were mystics. But okay, it's... same shit. Yeah. <laughs> they all study at Hogwarts. There, there are a few cases of the Spanish Inquisition hunting down people who are accused of witchcraft. Although, in comparison to the rest of Europe, including England, because England was really fucking terrible for this, it was quite mm. relaxed. The focus was mainly getting rid of those who didn't abide Catholicism. So they didn't mind witches, they just had to be Catholic witches. But was it most... a political thing, or were they yeah, actually, it's did a they political... believe that they well, were witches? I'm getting to that. Wait okay. a second. <laughs> the most famous example of witches being persecuted was the Basque witch trials of the 17th century, where 7,000 cases were examined, but only a tiny minority were fully trialled and executed by hanging and burning. And But as a whole, the Inquisition saw witchcraft as being superstition. I mean, they persecuted more people for sodomy than those who were punished <laughs> for witchcraft. Right, so, I mean, they they weren't totally crazy. They were torturing and killing people, but they were level-headed when it came yeah. to witchcraft. <laughs> yeah, they get a bad rap, that Spanish Inquisition. Yeah. If if you really want to look for some really awful witch trials, then the most famous example is the Salem witch trials of the 1690s, right, right. which was immor- immortalized in Arthur Miller's play The Crucible, which in turn was a commentary on McCarthyism. Oh, Way! Oh, We're linking this whole fucking show together. Oh, wow. That was great. And, <laughs> that, was, yeah, that was much better that than was my, Monty, my terrible Monty Python <laughs> thing. I just realized I got the tone wrong. It should be... Nobody expects a Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> no uh, so is there anything else <laughs> that you wanted to add? Uh, basically, hundreds of people were for- forced to confess witchcraft or face hanging based on circumstantial evidence provided by children or victims at the various townships. And there was this one thing which was fucking amazing that I read. One woman who was like a neighbour to the pastor... She invoked some English white magic, which involves baking a cake with the oh. afflicted children's urine to oh, identify okay. witches. And it was when like, it was, oh, a cake, and then, yeah. oh, urine. Um, and they fed it to a dog, and the theory was that because the witch had afflicted the children, some of that affliction was in their wee, and she was, like, spiritually connected to the children. So when the dog ate the cake filled with their wee, which was filled with the essence of the children, the witch would feel pain because she was being eaten. Okay. Okay. It was. I love the logic. Can I yes. just say? Yes, it's a bit of a stretch. I, I, I don't think it's scientifically accurate, no. but, but I, I, I see think what why she's Arthur Miller about. didn't put that in his play. No, yeah, it would have really added an extra element that yeah. appealed to the masses. That I, that I think it was lacking in the original yes. play, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Three stars. <laughs> yeah, well, they, 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 you learned something new today. Yes, I did. The Salem witch, cra- witch trials involved baking. Yes, I did not know we. that. I just thought it involved Winona Ryder and some kind of horrible adaptation movie. Hey, it was, um, it's a good movie, in fairness. I quite enjoyed it. I don't even remember it. I... <laughs> I've had to watch that pl- watch that film and perform that play so many times. It Oh, it kills you. Seared into your brain. Yep. Yeah. I, I would say that I can still remi- remember my lines, but I've blanked it from my memory. Yes, good. I did have to play Rebecca Nurse, though. That was where I got my old woman voice from for oh. Esther. Oh, excellent. See, you're experienced. You're in, I, only, I only hire, well, hire, <laughs> uh, experienced trained actors, masters of their craft. Yeah. I, I gave myself a proper injury as well in, in our performance of The Crucible. Because oh, um, at the that? end of the play... Rebecca falls over because she's like basically starving and dying and she's refusing to like confess. Mm-hmm. So she falls over and I fell over, whacked one of the actors with my walking <laughs> stick, landed on my knee and it was bruised for weeks. Y- it was you're really painting- bad. And I stayed in character <laughs> and, and my line was, I haven't had my breakfast. <laughs> that is her last line in the play. <laughs> And I performed it perfectly. 
you're you're painting a picture of I mean along with your jogging exploits you're painting a picture of a very clumsy person. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I am. Although in fairness, the whole issue with the jogging began whilst I was drunk. Oh, there you I go. can't a remember f- I can't remember person. why I fell over, but I did. It might point... have been whilst I was walking home. I'm the not sure. The point is is that you're on the ground a lot. Which conveniently is the same place where you'll find a lot of rattlesnakes. So uh, yeah, that's probably Not why I'm so vulnerable to them. You know. Yes. Yes. So I guess that's it for this month's episode yeah, of Lord Friendly. Well, yeah, it's Christmas special next. Yes, Christmas <gasps> I've special. I've just thought of what we could call the next one because what? your name is Chris. We oh, could call it God. the Christmas special. Oh, with a K. <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh, so brilliant. <laughs> By the way, I, I I went to Albertsons, which is a supermarket in America, the other day. Yeah. And uh, where my people get their sustenance. And I did find four different f- flavor cover uh, the four different flavors of Oreos. Oh my god. They had oh peanut butter, god. berry, mint, and chocolate. Oh shit, I am excited. Uh, I also also original. So five. Five different flavors. Well, I'm that was going an to tell term. you right now that I think you're going to need a kettle for the next podcast. Oh. <laughs> because I am going to send you some properly British things. I'll also need a boat and a plane ticket to Boston, apparently. <laughs> um, Don't uh, you I'll... fucking dare. Do not. <laughs> No, I'm going to send you the best tea that Britain has to offer, Uh, Yorkshire tea. We do have a we do have an ocean here, the Pacific, the best ocean in the world, the Pacific Ocean. You are not chucking it in the Pacific Ocean. (laughs) Uh, I'll I'll maybe one tea bag, maybe one tea bag just for tradition's sake. I'll need. I I definitely will not be chucking it. I need something to wash down the marmite. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) But. Am I correct in assuming you want mint, or do you want like a, a assortment like the Kit Kats? Everything. Mint Oreos. You want everything. All the things. All the things. Okay. All the things. And then I'll get, get you. Then as you many will get them. British... The thing is with like British foods and stuff, like most of our like amazing dishes, like Toad in the Hole and stuff, and York puddings, <laughs> they're all like awful. it's Toad in the Hole is basically sausages cooked in a Yorkshire pudding. And a Yorkshire pudding what? is basically pancake batter that's cooked in the oven. It's so nice. Okay. Okay. And, but basically, like a lot of British foods are, um, are like, you have to cook them and prepare them. So I'm just sending you like a shit ton of biscuits, basically. Okay. I can cook it. I'm going to teach you how to dunk a biscuit. <laughs> I don't just pick up things with my toes. I also have hands. So if you want, I can cook and prepare them. <laughs> no, no. It'll, it, I'm not sending you raw sausages. Oh, that's true. You can't do that. No, I can't yeah. do that. I'm afraid. No. Yeah. I think that would be an issue. Yes, the mailman is just going to be... <laughs> he'll have what is this in his smell? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's still like 80 degrees in California oh, right now. Oh, God. So... Yeah, I'm not sending you raw meat, I'm afraid. Yeah. The sun is shining on the Pacific Ocean, just like it does shine on the land of freedom. Um, <laughs> yeah. On that note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> tune in next month for our Christmas Chris with a K. special. <laughs> yes. Woo! Okay. Say goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, you're supposed to say goodbye, Alice. Fuck that shit. <laughs> no, no. You know, like, <laughs> like, like, say goodbye, Chris. Goodbye, Chris. Get it? Ha, 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 ha. Well, look, Christmas is the best joke that has come out of this podcast. Okay, um, I bow to you. I bow to you. <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye! This is Viridian, and you're watching the Freddy NPC Podcast Network. You may recognize my voice from my previous work, How to Subscribe to a Podcast. It's real easy. You just press the button. What should we cover next month? Make a suggestion in the comments. Ah, oh, am I kidding? No one's listening. I might just as well tell you my deepest, darkest secret.
<laughs> well, maybe I'll save that for the next month. Heard some of you want me to start my own podcast? Well, first we'll need funding. Please visit my Kickstarter project at giveveridianyourmoney.com. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the podcast. And for that, you deserve a reward. So, I can just figure out how to give it to you. I tried pushing it through the screen, but it's not working. Oh well, I guess I'll keep. It's not like you need a jetpack anyway. I mean, what year does Chris think it is? 1968? Polar alert? It's not. But maybe it can be. If you press the button. Oh. Uh, before we begin. I have to tell you my uh my lame Game of Thrones joke. Do you want to hear it? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you call a serial drama starring uh, Caitlin Stark or about Caitlin Stark's parenting? I don't know, Chris. What do you call a serial drama starring Caitlin Stark? <laughs> you call it Raisin Bran. Get it? Because ah! she's raising oh. Bran, and it's a serial drama. Oh, I get it. Oh. Uh, <laughs> are you slapping your knee right now? Did you hear that? No. Yeah. I oh, yeah. He's like, but Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs>